Hello fellow Clashers, it is Kairos time and welcome to today's episode on the top 10 decks to either play or watch out for in the Crown Championship Challenge. Thank you so much for watching today, guys. Today we're going to be talking about the top 10 decks to either play or to be aware of when it comes to the Crown Championship 20 Win Challenge. Stats Royale went and looked into the database and gathered over 300 decks that won the actual challenge and put them into a big list that you can actually take a look at on their website. And I'm going to be covering the best ones to be especially aware of when you're playing this challenge. Starting out, we have the P.E.K.K.A. Graveyard deck with the Poison and the Arrows and the Night Witch, surprisingly. This deck has a 63.4% win rate. Um, it has had five people win challenges with this. I decided to include this deck instead of some other ones that maybe have won some more challenges uh, because of the very significant lack of graveyard that we've seen in the meta. If you like to play the graveyard, then this is definitely a good deck for you to try out and mess around with. It does have that P.E.K.K.A. for a primary defense as well as the Night Witch as well. And then, of course, you can use the either th those two or the Ice Golem to act as tanks so that that graveyard can deal some damage onto your opponent's tower. You should reserve the arrows for offense to make sure that your graveyard can do some damage onto the tower by getting rid of things like skeleton armies uh, or even goblin, goblin gangs and the minions of any type and then use that poison mostly on defense unless your opponent does place down something like a wizard or barbarians or something, some type of troop where you can get some good value. Now almost none of the decks that we feature today have been primarily beatdown decks. I did want to include this one, although there were some decks that won more challenges than this deck, I did want to include it for you beatdown users out there. So you want to play this deck a little bit slowly and make sure that you are able to defend when your opponent is not, uh, when, isn't going to be able to put enough pressure on you. The bats help out with that as well as the mega minion and sometimes also the electro wizard. We have the lightning to really help get rid of defenses at that final push with those when your golemites are there and still tanking. Um, and if you can just use that lightning at the right time, it's very difficult for your opponent to really try and defend against this. And then obviously that elixir collector is here to try and help build up enough elixir for a massive golem lightning push. Number eight on the list is the Minor Poison deck. This is very similar to a deck that Tag made and put some tips on his channel on, as well as was featured on Clash with Ash's channel as well. If you want some good tips on playing this deck, make sure you check out their channels. This deck is very strong, uses the Inferno Tower on defense, as well as the, Ex the Electro Wizard and the Knight. Uh, and then on offense, we have the Miner and then the Bandit as well. Um, with a 63.2 win rate and 10 challenges won, this deck definitely is a strong one and a great option if you're a fan of Miner Poison. Now we have the Minor Balloon deck. Now this one uh, has a little bit of a lower win rate than a lot of the previous ones, but I did want to include it because of its originality and how unique it is. It does have that Miner as well as the Balloon in there uh, that allows for you to try and get the Balloon onto your opponent's tower when they're not able to defend. We have the Mini P.E.K.K.A. and the Mega Minion as well as the Bats for defense. And then we have the Ice Golem in there that acts kind of as a, a secondary pseudo tank if you do want to quickly drop uh, an Ice Golem and the Balloon at the bridge when your opponent has invested a lot of elixir and may not be able to stop that push fast enough. Um, very interesting one, 12 people have won this challenge using this deck and that uh, to me means that this deck is at least viable and probably one of the more fun ones and original ones to try out. Now we're up to what I like to call the electric P.E.K.K.A. Hog deck. Now. This is a very shocking deck to see in there. We have the Lightning, the Electro Wizard, and the Zap in there as well. This deck has given me plenty of issues in this challenge, um, although you can work around it. It has that P.E.K.K.A. for a really strong defense, as well as the Lightning to help get rid of Elixir Collectors, um, Three Musketeers, and then that Hog Rider is, does a great job at either going the opposite lane or down the same lane as that P.E.K.K.A., just kind of depending on what kind of uh, what you're going to need. This is a great adapt adaptation for the previous Bridge Fan meta. If you don't want to play the last Bridge Fan deck, but you did enjoy playing Bridge Fan, this would be a great one to go into and to try out. 
Up next, we have the P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam deck that does include the traditional three cards in P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam, as well as the Executioner for defense and archers as well to help get rid of bats and also adding a little bit of additional support on defense. And then we do have bats in this deck as well that act as a really great uh, way to try and get your opponent into tough situations if they have the log instead of the zap. Uh, we also have the poison to allow for additional damage onto the tower uh, or as a really solid defense as well. This deck has a 65.1% win rate and has won 13 challenges. There's actually another P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam deck that has done really well and is on um, statsroyal.com so make sure you check that one out as well. If you like to play the Hog Rider, then this is a great deck to try out. It has the Executioner Tornado combination that is just extremely good on defense. And as a P.E.K.K.A. Battle Ram um, Bandit player myself, this deck really gives me some trouble. Um, it has a 60.7% win rate, and there have been 17 people win the 20, man, the 20 win challenge with this deck. The Hog Rider works extremely well to try and get some damage onto the opponent's tower. Obviously, if you do need to just cycle through the, to the Hog Rider, you have that option of doing so. The Knight and the Goblins act as really great cheap defenses as well as the Ice Spirit. And then we have that Lightning that totally wrecks three Musketeers. It gets rid of Elixir Collectors for an even trade as well as some damage onto the tower. And and a lot of times, you can actually get rid of a lot more troops that are defending against that Hog Rider and get massive amounts of value with that Lightning. Up next is what I like to call the Snow Bow deck. This deck was very popularized, I'm sure, by a lot of people that are watching Surgical Goblins. This is the deck that he won the 20 challenge with, uh, and this is a very strong deck. Now, you'll notice that it only has a win rate of 49.6%. My best guess is that's because a lot of people have been watching Surgical's video and are trying this deck out for the first time, maybe not fully understanding how to use it and ha don't have that experience with the Expo, mostly because it hasn't been super popular in the previous metas. Now, that being said though, if you do have the experience with the Expo, you know how to play it, this deck is super strong and it has had 29 people win uh, with this deck. It does include that uh, the three Ice characters, the Ice Wizard, the Ice Golem, and the Ice Spirit, that are all really great at being good defenses, and they're very slow as well, which means that it gives you plenty of time to put that Expo down and apply pressure to your opponent. We have the Inferno Dragon in here to help get rid of big tanks, as well as the Fireball to try and get rid of Elixir Collectors and uh, other really strong offenses that may be coming down. It's actually a really good idea to use that Fireball on defense primarily, rather than trying to get some extra damage onto your opponent's tower, unless you do have to. Watching Surgical Goblin's video, obviously you're going to see that there are times when you do need to fire Fireball and Log Cycle to try and get that final damage off of your opponent's tower. Up next we have this Three Musketeer Fireball Bait deck. This deck is also really strong in the current meta because it takes advantage of people that do not have the Fireball in their deck or it takes advantage of people having to choose between which card to Fireball, the Three Musketeers, the Minion Horde, or the Elixir Collector. The Miner and the Battle Ram, as well as the Ice Golem, all act as little, very cheap tanks to be able to place in front of the Three Musketeers. So even if you are able to Fireball one side, then you can go down the other side um, and really go for, put, really put your opponent into some difficult situations. The uh, Goblin Gang does a really good job at helping to defend a lot of different things as well. This deck has a 66% win rate and has won a whopping 47 challenges. Absolutely insane. Lastly, we have number one, the Rocket Spellbait deck with a 61.4% win rate and 75 people having won the challenge with this deck. This deck is incredibly strong and is definitely a great option. We do have the Princess as well as that Goblin Gang and the Goblin Barrel, all of which are loggable and zap bait um, type cards and very strong offenses as well. Now one of the key reasons why this deck is doing so well in the current meta is because a lot of people are running zap instead of the log to try and defend against bats as you have seen from previous decks that we've included in this uh, in this video. 
As such, this deck really puts your opponent into some difficult situations. Now, if you aren't planning on playing this deck, make sure that you have a way to answer for this deck because it is such a strong one in the current meta. We have the Rocket in here to get rid of Elixir Collectors, um, the, the Three Musketeers, as well as Expos, um, which is really important to have in there as well. And then we also have the Knight on some defense and also acting as a pseudo tank to allow for that Goblin Barrel to really deal some damage onto the tower. And then of course we do have that Inferno Tower that does a really great job at defending against uh, big heavier tanks like P.E.K.K.A.s and every now and then the occasional Golem or Lava Hound. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, make sure you subscribe for future quality content and leave a comment in the section below. I plan on responding to every positive comment posted within the first five hours of the this video going live and I do read every single comment after that as well so let me know if you subscribed and guys thank you so much for watching this is Karasime ticking by and we will see you in the arena